In this video, I'm going to talk to you about Discovery Buzzers. Now, this is actually a real Discovery Buzzer sold by Hobby King. And this one just has a three pin adapter that plugs into your receiver and it can be turned on and off with a switch. There's also some that look like this, and this is just another piezo buzzer or a low voltage alarm buzzer or a discovery buzzer, whatever you want to call them. But this one just has two pins on it that have a positive and negative. Now this one, when it receives power, it turns on and starts buzzing. When it loses power, it stops the buzzing, just like a light switch in your house. This kind here actually plugs into a receiver and it is being fed power all the time, but the little switch wire, the white one in this case, the signal wire is actually turning the buzzer on and off. Now on a NAS32 board, you don't need a piezo buzzer like this. In fact, it probably do you, it's doing you more harm because it has an extra wire and, and also this one doesn't connect to your NAS board and so you can't, your NAS board can't communicate to you. You're better served by getting one of these. Now these are just little five volt piezo buzzers. You can, you can search for piezo buzzer on eBay and you can find these probably under like 10 of them under $2. And all you need to do is solder on your two wires, your positive and negative, and have some kind of connection like this on the back of it. Or if you have one of these kind of connections, a little servo lead, kind of like the one in the picture, you can hook up just the positive and negative, well, there we go, positive and negative wire and just ignore the signal wire on it and solder it, solder those wires onto your piezo buzzer. So here in the train, the first thing we want to do is set this up so that it starts transmitting the switch for channel six over one of our switches. Now we're gonna use this uh, switch here, SE10, and this will activate the piezo buzzer and turn it off. Now the first thing you wanna do before you mess with any of this, make sure you got it set up right. You wanna go into your menu, get on the model that you're supposed to be on, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, and push the page button, and we wanna go down through here, and you wanna get down to make sure you have Oops, go back up backward. Make sure you have this set right, where you got channels one to six or one to something. If you have it set to one to five, then you won't, won't be able to use your sixth channel. Anyway, make sure you got at least channels one to six activated and that your receiver actually supports more than five channels, which if you're using a Tyrannus, you, it probably should. Anyway, channels one to six. So I'll exit out of there. Next thing you wanna do, go to menu again, go back to your model, push the page button. We want to go over to the mixer and you want to come down here to channel six and hold hold down enter and edit and if you don't have anything on here already you might be able to just push enter. What we're going to do is like I said we're going to set the source to SE. So go ahead and push the enter button on there it starts blinking then come up here and flip the switch back and forth a couple of times and it will change this to SE. Now you can set this to anything you want but I'm just gonna do it in this example to SE. So now that I got SE on there, I go ahead and push enter. So now it's saved, exit, 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 okay. There we are, so we're done with the Tyrannus side of the setup. So here we are back in the base flight GUI and this is connected via USB to my quadcopter and the quadcopter has the battery connected to it as well. So that way I can see more information here. First thing we want to do is go over to the receiver button and we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch. We're going to flip the switch here and see if it's getting channel six. And look at that. It's coming across on channel six now. Now I have this one over here set up for my auto level. It's coming across on channel five. But this one's going to be for the uh, piezo alarm or the low voltage alarm or the discovery buzzer, whatever you want to call it. So what we want to do is go over to the, where am I going? Auxiliary configuration. And like I said, this one here is controlling auxiliary too. So you can see it switching between the, the three different positions, all the way back, middle, and all the way forward. And so what we wanna do is we're gonna set this piezo alarm, which is down here called the beeper. We're gonna check the, the middle button here, the, the one in the middle. And we'll go ahead and check the one at the high side too. So we'll check both of those. Now when you flip this, it should, when you, after you save this, it will start buzzing your buzzer. So let me go ahead and save this. Save. Okay, should be saved. So now that buzzer is connected to the, the switch here. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you. I'll uncheck the high one, hit save. Okay, now we'll do it again. When I go to the middle, it should go on. And go to the forward, it'll go off. There, it's off now. On, off. 
Okay, so that's the way to set up the piezo buzzer when it's connected directly to your NAS. If you're using a NAS32 board, this is the type of buzzer you want to get. This one allows the board to communicate to you and it also allows the board to be uh, set up to use this as a low voltage alarm and also as a discovery buzzer. Now there are some that have the three pin adapters such as uh, one like this, but in this case, well, you, this is more for uh, if you're using a KK2 board where setting up as a beeper, as a lost, um, as a discovery buzzer is not really set up to do. But like I said, on the NAS32, buy this, buy this one or make your own and uh, you'll, be, it'll, you'll be way better off doing it this way. Anyway, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.